Good morning. I'm Dr. Chet Rehal. Today, my guests are Dr. Brooks Edwards, Director of the Von Liebig Transplantation Center of Mayo Clinic, and Dr. Sudhir Kushwaha, Director of Cardiac Transplantation and the LVAD service here at Mayo. Brooks, Sudhir, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We're here to celebrate the 500th cardiac transplant that's been done here at Mayo. Brooks, you've been involved in this practice since pretty much the beginning. Tell me what it was like at the beginning of this uh, incredible journey. Well, it was, it was a very well-organized experience, really, from the beginning. And the success, I think, of transplant was the development of an integrated, dedicated, multi-specialty team. That team has met from day one through this morning at St. Mary's Hospital for the care of every patient. You really pioneered the heart team that the rest of us are now catching on to, didn't you? It's a, you could think of it as this early service line. It's yeah. cardiac surgery, cardiology, infectious disease, pulmonary, nursing, social work. And we meet together every day to discuss each individual patient. And I think in many ways that's been the success of the program. What were the major challenges then? Were they technical, surgical, or were they medical? Or? I think the practices changed in the early days um, the cases were in many ways very straightforward. We didn't have good treatment for cardiomyopathy, and so many of the patients were young people with a dilated cardiomyopathy. Now we see much more complex cases, patients who have had multiple previous operations, maybe patients who've been bridged with one or more uh, mechanical devices. There are technical issues. There are now different immunologic issues that have to be addressed. So there, what are the recent advances in the field of cardiac transplantation? Well, um, thanks for that question. I think the advances really are partly medical immunosuppressive type advances, which we've had a role in pioneering here at Mayo. And the field has changed as well, as Brooks alluded to, in the sense that we now have um, assist device therapy, which has actually changed the way we practice end-stage heart failure to a large degree. As far as immunosuppression is concerned, um, we've started using a lot more sirolimus, and our program, we try and transition most of our patients by around six months to this particular immunosuppressive because it's a powerful anti-proliferative, and it um, has been shown in our studies to really attenuate the development of allograft vasculopathy, which is the major limitation to long-term survival and always has been since the early days of transplant. If we look at the survival figures from the ISHLT database, which is a worldwide database of all transplants which have been done, we can see that historically we have, we have a survival of about 15 years or so, and some patients obviously live longer, but I think now with the change in immunosuppressive strategies which we've instituted here and now other centers are catching on, uh, I think we can hope to extend that significantly, actually. Now, most cardiologists in the U.S. aren't transplantation experts and yet touch patients who have had cardiac transpla transplant occasionally. Are there other medi medications that all transplant patients ought to be on other than the immunosuppressive regimens, statins, aspirin, for example? Yes, and, and this, is a, this is a very good point because um, some of the research we've done has demonstrated that uh, many of the risk factors which apply to what I'd call non-transplant coronary disease also apply to a vasculopathy. So we're very aggressive in treating um, high lipids, and in fact most patients are on statins unless there are major reasons for them not to be. And also we're increasingly realizing the role of antithrombotic therapy because it seems that platelet activation has as much of a role yeah. in... Um, in, uh, in promoting vasculopathy as it does in, in traditional coronary disease. Now, when should practicing cardiologists begin to consider advanced therapies for heart failure, whether it's VAD or transplant? What is the appropriate time for referral to, their, to a, a transplant center? I mean, Brooks, maybe perhaps I'll direct this to you. Well, we think about the patient who has declining functional capacity, the patient who's requiring one or more hospitalizations for heart failure in a year, and oftentimes we, we think the patients who have been well treated on standard therapy, ACE inhibitor, beta blocker, and so on, and are now not doing well on standard therapy. They've had 
uh, perhaps CRT, and they're having a functional decline. Because of the long waiting period and the many patients waiting for transplant, we'd rather see those patients earlier mm -hmm. rather than later. Right. Some of the risk is seeing them too late, and then, then it becomes a problem. I think this is a really important point. Brooks, what about the future? We're all aware of the shortage of organs. But what about the future? You're involved in regenerative medicine, for example. Are we actually going to be able to regenerate myocardium or potentially organs? Well, I think it's very exciting. I think this field is going to blossom and change the way we take care of patients. And I don't know whether it's going to be in five years or 10 years, but I think it's going to be in our practice era that we're going to be able to help some patients, maybe not every patient, but some patients restore normal or improved cardiac function with cell-based therapy or even some uh, medications that may stimulate their own regenerative systems. Well, this is really very exciting. So my guests today have been Dr. Brooks Edwards and Dr. Sudhir Kushwaha, who have given us an update on cardiac transplantation and VAD therapy. To, to summarize what they've said, I think the cardiology community is well aware of the, of the benefits of cardiac transplantation. Those of us that don't practice in this field ought to consider referral uh, for VAD or transplant therapy when patients are in optimal medical therapy, faced with a declining functional status or recurrent hospitalizations. Options include implantable LVADs, cardiac transplantation, and we hope in the future cardiac regenerative therapies. So Brooks and uh, Sudhir, thank you very much for joining me this morning. Thank you. Thank you.